When I started this report back in February, the world was a much different place. COVID-19 had just started, and when I did my research, I didn't take into account how much it would affect and impact our world. My report is on the floral industry. This report will address the question, is there sufficient demand in Norfolk County for florists to create a community-supported agriculture, or CSA, program with floral bouquets that use locally produce greenhouse flowers and field flowers. By utilizing the information provided by credible sites and articles, a snapshot of the floral industry was created and a forecast developed to determine if Norfolk County's agricultural landscape and their floral shops could support a CSA floral bouquet program. Norfolk County stands in a unique position as it is full of beautiful agricultural land that can be utilized for growing floral culture. Through the research conducted, it has been drawn a conclusion that while the floral industry is shrinking, IBS has indicated that between 2014 to 2019, the Canadian retail floral industry's growth was a negative of 1.9% a year. There is a new, there is room for a new approach to retail floral sales. Community supported agriculture is defined as agricultural marketing, whereby farmers are paired with individuals who invest in the farm to grow products that can be used for resale purposes, depending on the structure of the agreement between the farmer and the individual investors. This approach focuses on e-commerce sales and is based off the current movement across North America of the farm to table community supported agriculture programs. It's called the slow food movement, but there's also a slow flower movement. Based on the research conducted, it has been concluded that agricultural floral culture growth in Ontario is the third largest growing sector which indicates there's sufficient growth within the floral culture industry to support the creation of a year-round floral-based CAS program for florists to utilize. Norfolk County is, is considered Ontario's garden, making it an ideal geographical location for both field-grown and greenhouse-grown florals. CSA programs that could be offered in Norfolk are a new way for consumers to purchase flowers. It also means that they are supporting their local farms and that their money is going back into their community and it's helping the local economy to grow. New consumers are moving away from shopping at brick and mortar stores. Instead, they are looking for fast, convenient, on-demand online shopping. If you want to bring in consumers to your store, you are going to require a personalized, unique experience involving consumers supporting local entrepreneurs with great products. CSA programs offer this opportunity. The intent of the secondary marketing research is to analyze if there is a significant market demand in Norfolk County for a CAS program through retail floral shops. Brick-and-mortar retail stores, like floral shops, are on the decline around the world in what is being dubbed the retail apocalypse, where very sluggish static statistics, like 9,300 retail stores that closed in 2019, with the same prediction for 2020. However, the question remains, can floral shops discover new market potential through creating unique customer service offerings in the form of CS CSA bouquets? By using secondary marketing research to cover category, consumers, competitive, and pest analysis, we can devise an educated hypothesis as to whether there is enough demand for programs such as this one in Norfolk County. The floral industry is uniquely positioned as it is a perishable that is not for consumption. Florals are used to enhance surroundings and convey an emotional response. Because of this dynamic, floral culture takes on an art-like quality when it comes to quantifying florals into a class of product. With that said, it shows that florals and market demand for such products has been addressed 
through an approach that promotes the design of florals in an artistic manner. Overall, the appreciation of flowers is on the increase, as indicated by the Society of American Florists, which has also indicated that floral purchases from farmer mar farmer's market is on the increase as well, from 25% to 30% in 2016. According to Testista, cut flowers in Canada were worth $133 million as of 2018. In the consumer analysis, the secondary market research will focus on increase of consumers' purchases at farmer's markets. Further, the analysis will also focus on the type of consumer that is drawn to the local farmer markets and the movement of, of CSA programs. The competitive analysis section will look closely at the floral shops within Norfolk County and the consumer movement away from purchasing flowers from big box stores. Instead, consumers are moving towards a strong focus on floral design and artistry involved in their floral selections. In order to compete in this market, a retail floral shop must offer floral culture products outside the purview of big box stores. Finally, the report will analyze the pest, which is the political, economical, social, cultural, and technology impacts in the floral industry. If we take a look at Norfolk County, Norfolk County has a population of 64,000 people. It's considered Ontario's garden and grows several types of produce, cannabis, tobacco, and floral culture. It's a large tourist area as it's uh, surrounded by Lake Erie and there's many beaches that can be visited. It's an agriculturally rich land, much of which is surrounded with farms in the numbers of 1,307 farms located directly in Norfolk County. When we take a closer look at CSA programs, as studied by John Devlin and Meredith Davis from the University of Guelph, we realize that flowers and CSA programs fall under the alternative category, which represents about 20% of the products supplied through these programs. This percentage could be made higher if floral shops participated in programs where they offered native, vintage, and heirloom blooms to their customers. By diversifying the products offered to consumers, it allows CSA programs to compete with big box sellers of floral culture. Floral shops can increase the revenues and find a means to stand out from other from grocery stores by offering a uniquely locally unique locally produced floral culture. Floral shops fall under the NAICS number of 45311. By taking a, the lower middle average estimated revenue of floral shops in Canada, we discover that approximately approximate revenue is $1,032. Sorry. We discover that approximate revenue is $132,000. This is the lower middle average, which means the flower shops are not doing the best but they're putting themselves out there. Many of the flowers sold in flower shops across Canada are actually imported from Latin American countries, with Colombia being one of the highest shippers of flowers and Netherlands. Many of the flowers that are actually grown in Canada and Ontario and Norfolk County are actually sent to the United States. A CSA program would promote the use of all the local florals that are grown right here in Norfolk County. It would put money back in the communities and it would help promote sustainable crops. As you can see, Norfolk County has 1,307 farms, which are growing approximately 3.7 million square feet of flowers or floral culture. The profit of the floral, the agricultural industry in Norfolk County in 2016 was $519 million. Farmers in the area grow a variety of local fl flowers, including lilies, as pictured here, dahlias, 
rhinoculus, geraniums, lysianthus, Boston ferns, carnivorous ferns, and deciduous trees. All of these can be seen when taking a drive down Highway 24 in Norfolk County. This graph provided by Statista shows how many flowers, the number of cut flowers produced in Canada from 2015 to 2018 by province. If you look, Ontario has one of the top productions in Canada with decreasing production since 2015. However, some of that decrease in production can be um, figured out by the fact that there has been legalization of cannabis in the area, which means several farmers have decided to uh, plant cannabis crops and pull out their floral culture crops in order to plant a crop that brings in higher profits for them. When you consider the number of uh, farms available in, in Ontario and in Norfolk County alone, it has a substantial profitability for Norfolk County. Most floriculture retailers have a markup of 30 to 50 percent on, on their florals. This markup is often dependent on the type and scope of the work required to complete designs with the florals. SAF, which is the Society of American Florists, has determined that on average, people will spend $110 US a year on floral culture related purchases. We can further break that down by looking at um, the average cost for a cut flower bouquet or cut flower arrangement, which is about $63 average per, per purchase. When you figure out the $110, and you'd mark then the markup. Uh, each each uh, floral culture related purchase would then for, therefore create a profit between thirty three dollars and fifty five dollars US. If you're looking at the fresh cut flowers with an average cost of sixty three dollars, you're looking at a profit of eighteen dollars and ninety cents to thirty one dollars and fifty cents US. Further to this. Research has indicated that 27.7% of households purchase flowers at least once a year. This was con this study came from the American Floral Endowment Consumer Tracking Report of 2016. Looking at the population in Norfolk County, which is approximately 64,000, with the number of residents being 26,007 as of 2016, the potential for a CIS program to be profitable a profitable adventure, adventure increases substantially. Based on the research conducted, a CAS program could be profitable, a profitable adventure for the florists of Norfolk County and for the farmers who are participating. Our love of flowers might seem frivolous, but it drives a worldwide industry worth billions. This is according to Fredenberg in 2019 in an article that he wrote about sustainability of flowers and the profit that you can make while well, selling them. The use of flowers in homes to enhance decor, to elicit emotion, and to hide unbecoming odors has been something that has been documented throughout history. Over the years, the Netherlands has seen more than for 200 years has been the dominant shipper of flowers across the world. They were some of the first farmers to sell their field grown flowers as trade flowers and were the first to create a floral industry in the floral industry, what we call the Dutch clock, actually the Royal Floral Holland, which is still responsible for importing and re-exporting 40% of the world's flowers. With new technology, many other players in the world are starting to challenge the dominance of the Netherlands in the floral trade. Floral culture loses 15% of its value for every extra day of traveling, indicating that by selling locally, the value of the product remains intact. For Norfolk County, this means that they have the option to take advantage of increased technology to help grow unique products that can be sold as specialty floral culture 
that will snake top dollar and is domestically produced in, but not in nationally and internationally sold as well. By offering their premium products at their local markets first, for example, to the local floral shops through a CSA program, they'd be offering high quality, sustainable products that produce much less environment, environmental impact than those that are imported from overseas. Farmers would be offering products that have longer shelf life and are of higher quality than those shipped around the world. Further, the floral cultural category is considered a luxury item and often sees its revenue decline during tough times, with its average floral sales reducing when the economy hits a bump. Looking at the numbers provided by IBS World, there is a steady prediction of industry decline if floral shops do not find a way to diversify their products and move to an online platform. With that said, it does appear that with innovation and the right marketing mix, florists are able to withstand recessions comparatively well to other trendy businesses. Niche marketing to create diversification of local product can be offered by florists through CSA programs. You can see from this slide that customer appreciation of uh, florals has increased since 2009 by 73 percent. Um, with the in increase in appreciation of flowers, that means that more people are purchasing florals as a floral gift. Uh, floral culture includes both cut flowers and plants and can be purchased at floral shops and garden centers, but we also see a lot of florals being sold at big box chain stores especially around the holiday times. It seems every store in the area, whether it's a hardware store or a grocery store, even the convenience store, they all seem to start carrying florals as a form of selling to a increased demand at special occasions. A CAS program could actually be an advantage in uh, those types of holidays because all these shops could purchase locally grown flowers from our local agricultural producers in Norfolk County. This is a graph indicating where do people buy flowers. You can look at the graph and see that supermarkets still have a high dominance in the purchasing of florals uh, with local florals, florists and in person. The next one following uh, nursery, nursery or garden centers and then farmers markets. Uh, you can see that there has been an increase in the purchases at farmers market as people are looking to purchase locally grown florals and support their local communities. CS programs have been around for many years. Um, there's a history of them being used and uh, helping support residents and uh, helping support farmers uh, mutually and purchasing of the products that they've grown. Recently, the popularity of these programs has been uh, flourishing as it's a ben benefit to uh, both the community and to uh, entrepreneurs. Floral culture is, is sold in small shops, right up to large ones like Loblaws. And many flowers are shipped from other countries, as we had already indicated. You can see this chart, 43% of flowers are exported from the Netherlands, 16% from Colombia, and 11% from Ecuador. When we move on to the consumer analysis, you can see that um, we have a target market that has been established. We're looking at 25 to 65 years of age, females and males with an income over $40,000 a year. Uh, in Norfolk County, the average income's about $33,000 a year um, at the lowest and, and closer to 77,000 on average at the highest. Um, people who are participating, consumers that are participating in these programs are looking for, are environmentally conscious and they're looking for local product for purchase. They're purchasing florals as gifts, uh, as 
for DIY projects and they are using them for events like weddings, baby showers, wedding showers, and so on. With the floral industry, the target market is very much flexible and it changes with the, the occasion. So for every occasion, like Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, um, prom season, the marketing mix will be altered in order to reach the maximum amount of consumers. Traditionally, 65% of all floral purchases are conducted by women. However, the current trend in the floral industry is to attract more of a millennial segment towards purchasing a floral culture. The reason for this is that millennials have substantial purchasing powers. Um, according to Fromm and Garten, millennial consumers have a collective annual buying power of $200 billion, with direct spending reaching over $500 billion. Further research has shown that amongst millennials, 18% purchase floral culture monthly, while 12% buy more frequently, often using online apps. As we said before, floral culture presents a unique challenge when developing a target market, as the industry is hardly dependent on annual events. Um, for example, in Ontario during prom season, Florists would be targeting the age group of 16 to 19 year old males and females who would be attending their local high school proms. In Norfolk County, there are five high schools with national average of $500 spent on prom activities. Florists would seek to be part of the, these teens' monetary spending. By specializing in native vintage and heirloom blooms through a CA, CSA program, florists would be able to capitalize on creating unique, customized customizable designs, something that is highly appealing and sought after after this generation of prom girls. With each special occasion, especially those that are widely commercialized, an adjustment in the target market must be executed to capitalize on consumer spending. So we look at the behaviors and usage. Seasonality is a big uh, responsibility in the behaviors and usage of cut florals. The purchase of florals that are produced within their season at a local level that offer unique blooms, including native vintage and air bloom, heirloom floral culture, sustainability. People will pay 25% more for a product that they feel is a sustainable and reduces the environmental footprint. Um, and, Fresh local grown floral culture. Floral culture that is unique to our region where the money spent stays here and aids in our local economy and elevates our local standard of living. Further, uh, CSA programs help to uh, eliminate the middleman. 80% of flowers sold in America are shipped from other countries. And this is very similar in Canada. Flowers are shipped from South America on a plane, loaded into a seller's truck, stored in a warehouse, and then eventually put back on another truck that travels all over Ontario delivering florals. Consumers who want to purchase local flowers are looking to eliminate some of the middle steps. They are seeking farm to table. While they could go directly to the farm themselves, they will not be offered the artistry that comes along with creating unique floral arrangements like that is, that is offered at floral shops. Floral culture has a cigar of 50% for gifts as an end usage, followed by the usage of special occasions like weddings and rounding off with personal usage. In a st study conducted by Flowers Canada, Ontario in 2016, it was noted that amongst the millennial consumer of gifts, only 10% recognized the pick Ontario symbol denoted for flowers, floral, florals produced and grown locally in Ontario, while 74% recognized the VQA symbol for the purchasing of wine. What is noteworthy about this research is in that Ontario wine producers, who are florists' direct competition for the gift-giving market usage, are doing a much better job at reaching their target market than the Ontario floral industry. Consumers of cut flowers need to feel that they are receiving value in their purchases. According to the Floral Canada Research Report, the biggest barrier to purchases of cut flowers is a perception 
um, of price and the belief that they do not last, which was cited by seven in 10 millennials as a reason not to purchase florals as a gift. CSA programs using local blooms would help to enhance the freshness perception of the florals being given and also increase the value perception of the florals gifted. Although the gift of flowers is the second highest on the appreciation level with wine coming in first, there is an overall feeling that giving flowers is not easily executed. In other words, purchasing fresh flowers is more taxing and less convenient than other gifts. When we look at the competition within Norfolk County, there are numerous businesses and big box stores that sell floral culture. Many of the um, shops in Norfolk County have been family owned for numerous generations and they have built a very loyal customer base. They are also deep rooted in tradition and you can see through their designs, people who have more traditional designs with florals and people who have more modern designs with florals. You can also gauge by visiting their websites and their social media who has a thumb on the millennial generation that requires fast, easy, convenient uh, purchasing options. When looking at the competition, the best of the competition seems to be Ising Garden, Garden Center. Um, the owner is everywhere. His name is all over the community. Um, the store is often in the newspaper. He was just in the news, this Hamilton Spectator, um, talking about the impact of COVID-19 on the floral industry. Um, he's often on the radio and he does both modern and traditional forms of advertising. If looking at a CAS, CSA program, some a company like Ising's would be the ideal place to introduce such a program um, with his unique marketing uh, style and his ability to reach customers on many levels. It would be a great way to promote locally grown Norfolk County florals. We now move looking at the pest analysis uh, we look at we're looking at the political impacts first we're looking at the fact that tariff reduction and free trade has increased the amount of flowers that are being imported into Canada and used in Canada um, also there is the idea that there is less labor uh, costs involved with flowers that are coming from other parts of the world um, with our minimum wage increasing in Ontario to $14 an hour, a lot of small shops are not able to, and small um, businesses like small agricultural production businesses are not able to afford um, keeping their prices at the minimum and survive. So a lot of times you're looking at uh, other countries, uh, floral culture is a lot cheaper uh, even with the shipping from across the world than it is to purchase the local product. Another thing that we look at is uh, the legalization of cannabis in uh, Canada. In Norfolk County, that has meant a lot of our agricultural land has been consumed uh, for the growth of cannabis rather than the growth of produce or floral culture. Um, there's a much higher yield and a much higher profit off of cannabis than there is off of floral culture and a lot of produce and so the appeal to farmers is very high. Uh, finally there's the idea that um, with the wine industry the provincial government has promoted um, the VQA branding of wine and as stated previously 74 percent of millennials recognize that symbol over the Pick Ontario floral symbol. Um, if the government could help with the Pick Ontario, the increase in floral sales would be substantial. We next move on to the economic uh, impact. Um, the first one, COVID-19. Um, 
Many industries are facing unprecedented times right now where they have to shut down because of this and unemployment has become rampant because of COVID-19. The overall impact on most industries hasn't been realized yet, but articles like the one in Hamilton Spectator speaking to several uh, Norfolk County growers um, expecting losses due to COVID-19 is very telling. In the article, uh, Vanderhyde family of Creekside growers were interviewed and they are worried that they will have to trash some 80,000 dahlias that they grow each season due to the pandemic. The article entitled Easter Lilies Out, See Packets in as Greenhouse Adjusts to Pandemic Reality also interviewed Henry Ising and who he's taken to selling his product online and offering curbside pickup. 80% of their business is done in the spring and they will not realize that profit having to sell the way that they are. Um, business is not as normal and the risk is very high for a lot of these small businesses. We will see at the end of this who will come out and what will be the result. Um, that aside, the other barrier in the econ economics of um, a CSA program is it's a high financial risk for those who are entering into it. If you do the traditional method of purchasing, investing in um, the program before the farmers plant, there's always a chance that there could be a drought or there could be a tornado or some sort of natural disaster that prevents you from receiving the product that you've already paid for. If they adopt the style where they are um, planting and then having uh, florists purchase directly from them in order to sell the product, there's a lot less risk, but it just depends on how the farmer decides he wants to, or she wants to set up the floral program. Social culturally, there is traditional values still ingrained in Norfolk County, um, which means there is uh, some barriers to the purchasing of florals are still considered 65% of women do buy them, but it really limits the amount of purchasing that can happen when there's still traditional gender roles in play. Um, technology wise, we're looking at um, the seamlessness of transportation in the industry. This technology has allowed flowers to be shipped basically overnight from all over the world and then make it to our markets within 48 hours. Um, these advances mean that flowers are being purchased from all over the world at cheaper rates than what a lot of local farmers are able to offer. Um, another thing to look at too is the hybridization of uh, the floral industry. That means that you literally can no longer stop and smell the roses as the scent has completely disappeared out of them, uh, a byproduct of which is now our pollinators who rely on that scent in order to locate the flowers and pollinate them and reproduce. Uh, the florals are, are no longer doing that. Um, and so that leads to the reduction of naturally grown florals. Um, and naturally scented florals as well. Um, the scent has been bred out of them in order to increase their longevity. Um, but oftentimes what you find is people seem to not uh, enjoy not having that smell of a fresh floral. Um, one thing about technology that could be um, a great part of uh, the floral industry is that with technology, it offers a chance for our local farmers to grow their unique native vintage and heirloom blooms uh, through uh, diversified and specialized technology that uh, is not usually available. Um, by doing this, it offers a niche and uh, a diverse market that people can sell, that people can purchase from. In this next picture are the pictures of the florals, just some of the florals that are available right here in Norfolk County. Um, there's a grower of calla lilies, there's a grower of tulips, 
Um, tulips are available all seasons, up just not in July and August. Those are the only times you can't get them around here. Uh, Gerber daisies as well are in huge production uh, right here in Norfolk County as well. Um, based on the information that was uh, researched in this report, uh, it's concluded that a CSA broker program within Norfolk County would be a viable and valuable business adventure. In the current climate, the recommendation would be to hold off starting the program until such times as economic and the social cultural impact of COVID-19 pandemic have been recognized. With that said, despite the decline of floral shops over the past years and the prediction of the continuous decline, there is opportunity to create a new market for florists using locally produced and sustainable floral culture. It would be a new means of marketing the floral industry, but based based on the current climate, we would still recommend that you wait. Norfolk County offers a great opportunity for a CSA program based on bouquets and floral culture. It's something that is uh, very explorable and it's something that um, would really boost the local economy um, and help bring joy to people's lives. I hope that in the future we will see such a program in Norfolk County.